All right. So the question of evil. Does it exist? Is God good? Is he still in control? Now, there's some preliminary doctrines I want to talk about as we get going. Okay? The first one, there's, there's actually there's three preliminary doctrines. Let's go ahead and jump in. Ready? The first one. Oh, here's a question. Here we go. God is good, which means he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's not going to want to hurt us. Number two, God is sovereign, which means he's in control. Number three, evil exists. That's something I think pretty much everyone agrees on, atheists and non-atheists. There is evil in the world. There's bad things that are happening. And there's basically two kinds of evil. Natural evils, like we talked about, like hurricanes and cyclones, typhoons. Number two, moral evils. Uh, go ahead, next one. As we're moving through, there's two questions I'm actually going to ask tonight. And I'm, going to, the, I'm going to spend the most of my time on the first one. How did evil come into the world? Where did it come from? What was the origin, according to the Bible, for the most part? And number two, we'll spend a little bit of time on God's creation. Uh, was it, oh, well, no. Was it God's creation or was it a byproduct product of God's creation? Those are the two ways evil could have come into the world. Okay, because he created everything. We're Christian, I'm a Christian, so I believe that. Keep on going. And the next question I'm going to ask is uh, a second. <laughs> so, here's, the, th here's the, the six different options for the way evil could have come into the world. Now, the first one, first four, have to do with a BIPOC product of God's creation. God created, and then something came out of that. The first one, Satan. He introduced it. Second one, originated in the first human decision. So, when Adam and Eve made a decision, or the first bad decisions, maybe, uh, that's where it came from. Number three, it originated by a distortion of the good, and that would be Augustine. That's what he proposed. Uh, evil is just, it's not original. It's, uh, it's just a, a distortion of what's already there. Number four, God could not help allowing it to exist. He's like, oh, oh, I did it. Oh, okay, I've got to deal with it now. Uh, and then the last two have to do with God created it. Number one, it existed eternally with God, which we can talk about that. And number, uh, sorry, number five. Number six, God created it for his purposes. So let's go on to the first one right now, originating Satan. Now, we all know that God created Satan. Satan fell. He messed up. If you want to know how Satan fall, fell, Generally, most scholars and theologians agree that Ezekiel chapter, I think it's 32, no, 28, Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19, and Isaiah 14, they talk about how Satan fell. He said he was a perfect being. He was, he was, he was a seal of perfection, full of wisdom, full of beauty, perfect in all your ways. Now, Luther, would be, Martin Luther, he'd be one of the guys that said origin, uh, evil originated in Satan. And this was pre-human, okay, before, so it was around before. That's the first thing. So Satan fell. He was perfect, but he became sinful. One of the interesting things about him becoming sinful was that once he became that way, it was a part of his nature. He couldn't do anything other than mess things up. He was the accuser. He didn't have another option. That was who he was. Um, and then the nature of the first evil was pride, and uh, several other uh, theologians agree with that as well. So that's the first part of this question. The second part of this question is uh, originally with Satan, and he introduced it, but it came through the serpent. Now, I'm looking at the Bible in this one. And with the serpent, he was crafty. He was tricky. Tried to get by things. He was a tricky guy. Uh, he introduced suspicion. Did God really say that? Before this, there may not have been suspicion. That was, that was inaugurated by the serpent, by Satan. Second, he, uh, or third, he introduced the value of self. Man, you'll have this. This will be great for you. doesn't matter what God says. He introduced half-truths. If you eat it, you won't surely die. Well, it would die spiritually. It didn't die physically right away. So it's kind of true, kind of not. Introduced half-truths. Just a little bit of deception in there. And he opened the possibility of disobedience. Before this, there may not have been the possibility of disobedience. But he gave it. He opened the gates. He opened the gates for it, and Adam and Eve were the ones through which the channel of evil could have come. All right, keep on going. So that's the that's the, that's the first one. The second one is or, uh, evil originated in the first human decision. Now, evil had already existed, but had not necessarily flowered until the first human bad decision. This is where free will would come in, and uh, <clears throat> Luther would say, "Well, free will exists in name only." And only as long as it does what it's able to do, it commits a mortal sin because the will is captive and subject to sin. 
since then. Now, that's after the fall. But before the fall, was there still free will? I would say one way to look at it is to think that maybe evil, maybe the, that maybe the serpent didn't have, maybe the serpent, because he introduced the idea of disobedience, there was the free will always to do right. Free to do right. <clears throat> Not free to do right and wrong. But if Satan introduced evil, he would have been the one to introduce the possibility of doing wrong. Uh, Calvin uh, was also along these, uh, along these lines. He would have said, Adam's fall perverted the whole nature, uh, the whole order of nature in both heaven and earth. Um, <clears throat> and God allowed free will to exist. So that's option number two about where evil came from. Option number three would have been, it originated by a distortion of the good. And this would have been Augustine's view. He was a, a church father who lived back 500 uh, AD, I believe it was, or it was 300, 500, somewhere in there. And he was based in, in northern Africa. <laughs> and he contended that evil was not created, but consists in the voluntary turning, turning away of free beings from the good. Evil is therefore nothing but the absence of good, which comes about when a thing defects from the mode of being originally intended for it by God and His creative design. So when something says, nope, I'm not going that way, doesn't do what it's designed to do, that is the definition of evil. It's not original. I kind of like that one. And actually, I think C.S. Lewis would have been one to propose that view as well. Uh, going on, the next one. Number four, it existed eternally with God. Now, this is a possibility. In fact, well, no, I don't think it's a possibility really for Christians because that would mean it would be part of God's nature to be evil. And if God was evil, he ex every part of his nature is fully encompassing. If he was fully good and fully evil, it would be manifest in other places in the Bible, but it's not. He allows things to happen. And the fact that uh, evil, evil exists in eternity, you would find maybe an equal statement as well within the Bible. But it's not there. But we find that God is love, not evil. So, I think we can kind of throw that away. Next one. Uh, God could not help allowing it to, to exist. It kind of threw it out there. It's like, oh, oops. Uh, I think I missed that one. Well, we'll just deal with it. Well, this doesn't work really either. But for, cause for God to make, maybe, maybe it's possible, for God to make the physical world as it is required certain things. And in order to feel things, I have nerves. Okay? Now, at what point, when I start kicking the ground, and I kick it harder, and I kick it harder, ooh, does it start to hurt? At what point does that pain, that suffering, become something that's evil? Even if I inflicted it on myself. So if God wanted nerves, if He wanted pressures, if He wanted tensions, then He automatically would have had to introduce evil and suffering into the world. Definitely in the physical sense, when you're talking about nerves. That's why leprosy victims... They, they need to feel, and it's not a good thing that they don't. So at what point does feeling become evil or not? Two of those. Ah. Keep on going. Number six. Uh, the last possibility is God created for His purposes, which I tend to think is probably uh, He allowed it to exist for His purposes. That's why I would see it. And as we're moving on, keep on going. Uh, next thing, as we're finishing up, I want to talk about the possibility of the fall is it a real event or a metaphor for human rebelliousness? Now, I'm going to run through a few simple ideas, which I think are biblical, uh, and I'm going to make the point that I think it is not a metaphor, but it could also be a metaphor, but it really is a real event. Okay, keep on going, John. First one, Adam the person existed as a historical human. If it's just a metaphor, there's no need for a historical human. There's no need. I could just make up the story. He's kind of one guy who existed one time. But no, he's connected to historical events within history. Next. Uh, he lived a certain amount of years, 930, right alongside others who also lived a specific amount of years. There's no need to put specific numbers in there if it's a myth. It really doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Next. He's listed in the genealogies. And he's connected to Jesus. There's a line that connects him to Jesus. No need to do that. doesn't make sense if it's a myth. Why would you connect yourself to a myth? And there are, specific, there are specific times and places they lived in the land of Nod. That's actually a place. That's where Cain lived. Uh, it can't be a metaphor, uh, metaphorical at the same time. In conclusion, one last statement. I would say 
the, the Bible does not solve the problem of suffering. It shows us that suffering is a reality to face, not to solve. Jesus did not seek to explain, explain simplistically the fact of evil and suffering, but he reached out with love and compassion of God to heal and alleviate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir.